Hi everyone. Hi guys. Lovely to see you. Um, so we're back in, not the loft, but not in loft. lovely Royston. In my... Uh, should I have said where you live? Is that, I mean, no one's going to find you. No, I mean. Well, I know, yeah. But we're in a lovely part of the world and Dan lives here in this amazing in my barn. In my house. Um, I think we're actually, we're not in the loft. But I, think, I think this may be older than the loft, my house. Well, the loft of St. Vidas is about 1960s. All right. Okay. Well, after, <laughs> after, after the war, yeah, the whole church was gutted and rebuilt, so... This but about, this is a very old, isn't it? This, yeah, is, this is about 400 years old. Yeah, amazing. So, so anyway, so we are here, um, excitedly, Yes. to talk about... Oh, I've been so excited about this perfume. Bum, ba -da -ba 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 -bum. Sacred Scarab. So this is a the newest released uh, from the House of Zoologist, or the newest at the time of recording. I think he's in the process of releasing another one. Um, oh, really? Yes. I must he, this is... Um, a few uh, months ago, probably now, uh, yeah. Sultan Pasha joined us in the loft, um, and we that was a talked great day. about a lot. It was it was a great day. There was a lot of um, smelling and sniffing and chatting, and one of the things we sniffed for the first time was before it was ever released. Before it was, released, felt like a real treat. Actually, it didn't it? Did a little kind of like preview, and then as a um, he then sent, uh, I think he just sent me actually, I don't think he sent anyone, um, a, 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 another little sample mm. for, for me to kind of try a bit further. And I fell in love with it further. And That's so really then I went to Bloom in London to buy myself a bottle of this because I knew I had to have it. Um, and it turns out that that was actually about 10 days before it was released um, mm. anywhere else. I don't know why uh, Bloom had it. Um, but I, ha I had to have it, and now, and now I've got it. So, so Joe um, obviously tried it um, a, a few months ago when we were yeah. with Southern Pasha. But very briefly, I felt I, I'd never got to live with it. Very kind Which of. I'm um, glad I came now. I've spent more time with it now. Joe has had a spray, had a little spray, a spray here. earlier. Um, uh, so let's just talk a, a little bit about um, you know uh, 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 Sultan Salt Pasha. We've. In our first video um, about his work, we've talked about uh, his atars. So I've um, been familiar with his, his atars for um, for several years, and they've cropped up in mm. our, our lists. And and one of the things we've um, talked about with his atars is that um, he seems to have kind of two styles, kind of two sides to him almost. One which is very, very much rooted in the kind of classic French style. The other one uh, uh, is um, one which uses exotic materials like um, ouds and sandwoods yeah. and, and animalic uh, materials. Um, but Multifaceted uh, guys. Multi, multi, multi multifaceted. Multi-talented multi as well. Multi-talented. Yeah. Um, but these kind of two kind of um, uh, styles or, almost. And I think, I think we get both... Of, of, of them mm. in here, which we, which we'll discuss in a moment. It's a journey, um, isn't it? I found already on this, it's a journey. It, it is. And it's a very beautiful one. It's a rewarding um, oh, I need some journey. Um, Zoologist um, uh, is a house that we've uh, talked about a lot. And we, we really, have. we've really it's enjoyed. a love affair. They, they've given us, um, Victor Wong, who, who really is the kind of beating heart behind Zoologist, has given us um, a huge amount um, to, to, to enjoy. L lots of fragrances uh, we've um, tried and enjoyed. And, and we particularly like uh, the, the early, um, uh, the first few years of Zoologist, he seemed to have a knack for finding the best up and coming um, independent um, perfumers. Mm. Antonio Gardoni, Sarah McCartney, yeah. um, Joseph Delap. Joseph Delap um, uh, lots and lot, lots. And whoever did the. Um, Original bat, oh, yes. which I love. I, I, I thought it was fantastic. What's her name? Her name. I can't think of her name. Anyway, we'll put, I'll put it on. Yeah. Um, Beautiful friend. Um, more recently, um, it seems uh, he has been turning towards kind of the the big oil companies, people like IFF, for finding his um, perfumers, um, and, 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 and as a result, that the fragrances have been a little bit more on the mass appealing yeah. side. Perhaps as as the, as the company expanded. Um, he wanted to play things a little bit safer as he's reaching a broader yeah, market. Understandable. Un understandable as the business expands. So it's been interesting uh, and pleasing to us that he's taken what could be considered a risk by um, 
going with not just a self-taught perfumer, but a perfumer who hitherto has only released um, Atars. So we know that Sultan Pasha um, yeah. is, is about to release some fragrances um, on his own line and for some other brands. But th this is, I think, the first alcohol-based perfume yeah. full stop that he has released. So it's really exciting. The first sprayable perfume <laughs> in a bottle that we've been craving Indeed. from him. Um, one, just one more, before we talk about it, uh, it's how, how it smells, one more thing to say, like, this has um, gone up in price. So yeah. um, this this uh, cost um, 210 um, British pounds. So it, it actually costs 210 US dollars, but Bloom in uh, London have a strange habit of um, converting dollars to pounds oh, by just, simply changing directly. the symbol uh, at the beginning, which is not how it works, but, you know, there we go. Um, so it, 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 it is an expensive fragrance. So no matter what we say, we do urge you to get yourself a sample first. Don't yeah, blame, absolutely. don't buy the, buy the bottle. Trust your own nose, not anybody else. But that side, let's, um, let's get sniffing and talk about what it let's smells like. Let's remind ourselves. Oh, it's such a good opening. <laughs> yeah. It's so yeah. good. It is. So um, I think it's just such a, a happy making, uplifting, energetic. Um, there's so much smile. Yeah. I remember when we first smelt it um, with Salt and Passion, we saw the name um, Sacred um, Scarab and we weren't quite sure what to expect. And you, and you smell, the, the first day, it's just, it's, it, it's radiant, it's glowing, it's golden, it's happy. You could expect something quite brooding and weird and yeah, murky, yeah, couldn't you? But it's, kind of it's the opposite. But, um, and, 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 the other, Beautiful. and the other thing with that, it, 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 it smells French. It, it, yeah. it, um, I think what I mean, it, it, it feels um, classic French. There's Very classic. Aldehydic, slightly citrusy, Gently floral, not overtly floral, floral, but certainly this aldehydic classic French perfume. Yeah, it's in there, isn't Chanel, it? Chanel, Dior. Um, um, I mean, it shows a real nod and respect to the, it, the yeah, past it, it and feels, the vintage greats and the, and the techniques. And nod to the past, not as far as Egypt, but, um, uh, but, but certainly... Um, Someone who loves their vintage girl. To French uh, classics. Yeah. There, so there's there's a little bit of um. Oh, it's very seductive. It, it it is it is seductive and there's um so there's a bit of um f there's a floral quality lurking in there which I don't think is um um necessarily an, an obvious one because it it doesn't go in a kind of rosy or a, or a jasmine no. uh, way. So there the, there is um. Lotus in this, and I I've not smelt yeah. lotus on its own, but I can't we, remember ever smelling lotus on its own. But we were we were talking. I really as, don't know what that smells like. A, a, as a reference point, like Hasuno Nohana mm. by um, Grossmith is one where I think is a kind of um, a, a lotus accord, which is going on there, and this creeps in as this sort of quite fresh, f bright floral, mm. which which kind of I think helps kind of segue from uh, the. Um, the very bright, energetic opening. But the other thing, which um, we're starting to get on cards, and I and I remember when uh, when we went into a Bloom a few weeks ago, I'd already kind of made up my mind I was going to buy it, but we still spent about an hour and a half smelling mm. other fragrances, and then eventually we picked up this and, and, and sprayed it and smelt it, and I sprayed it at a, at a distance, and I got all of those um, opening notes we described so far. But the other thing I got was this wine... Uh, quality, this wine yes. kind of accord, and I think that's something which you, which you start there. to get on skin quite soon. And that wine mm. uh, cord is um, uh, refers to kifi, so this is this um, Egyptian incense. I said, I've got some, I've got, I've got, I've got some upstairs. We should burn some. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can, I can on it, but yeah, but I, I actually bought as as a bit of kind of like um, study some uh, some kifi incense. You can buy it, so it's something which has mm. um, uh, existed and been documented uh, since Egyptian times, and you can still you can still buy. It. And it's this kind of um, plummy whiny um, incense, yeah, um, which is is um, you know slightly uh, unfamiliar to 
to kind it's of not going to be the very heady sort of frankincense -y No, it's this kind of raisiny, really uh, it's, it, raisiny, whiny, plummy quality, mm. which is which is definitely, I don't think that's what most people think when they think incense. No, no. There, there was a bit of olibanum w with that bright kind of sparkly opening, but there's this whiny raisininess drawing you in, um, which which help which starts the segue from the um, the kind of classic French opening. We, 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 you start to get a bit of something else. Mm. It starts to kind of drag you somewhere else. Um, and what is the wine? I mean, I don't know. It's it's, it's what is it? Is a full bodied Cabernet Sauvignon? Yeah. It's something big and round, isn't it? It's bit, It's very opulent, and it's very. It's not very alcoholic, but it's very fruit driven. It's very yes. and like old, I think older as well. Yes. Yeah. The yeah. fruit has faded from being that fresh young mm. fruit to being something a little bit more. Like a ghost of what it was, unlike, but still with enough body that you recognise it. Unlike the the the, the, the first um, spray, which <clears> did feel um, very uh, very energetic and alive. Yeah. And then I feel we start to get this kind of second half almost to the uh, the, 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 the the perfume from the kind of yeah. opening French. You, it, you go in this much more, and so Joe's actually got the the, the mm. dry down. Oh yeah, that's and, really good. And actually, the, the thing which is notable wow. about that, which we haven't mentioned yet. Is the animalic quality? It's sort of it's just gently warming up, isn't it? Yeah, it, I don't I don't think it's overt, but but it, it's purring all the way. Mm. And actually, you just reminded me, smelling it on your wrist, I definitely get this kind of civety kind of um, funk, and this alive. It doesn't feel. We always use the term animalic, which makes you think of animals because lots of animalic materials were animal derived, musk, mm. civic, historian. It doesn't feel like an animal, it feels like human, it feels like flesh alive. Yeah. It's almost similar to Bengal Rouge. That that sort of animal, yeah, which is yeah. warm like it's that sort of it's that sexual smell of putting your mm. your nose in someone's mm -hmm. neck or something, you know, when you're Well I sometimes in bed use the, the idea of Getting, or other parts getting into the, the the bed that you know a loved one has just kind of like like stepped out of totally. still warm and has this has the smell of them but it's uh, real it's, it's not it's, like, real. it's not a smell from somewhere else it's a real it's a real smell real it's weird isn't it because you say like scarab beetle the two things you think of are ancient egypt and dead or a beetle which you think of yeah and down and, and, and sort of. yeah whereas i think there's there, there's a surprising warmth so after we've yeah. had the kind of kefi, winey transition, it starts to become more resinous. Um, and I think he lists uh, labdanum and, and amber on there, but it never goes for me in a sticky no. labdanum, vanillary way at all. It's much more dry spice, more murray, yeah. I think. And I find it more tobacco-y, mossy. Yeah, well, I think that... That's It's interesting. Me. I think that after you get to the kind of resinous, there's almost like a reprise of the French opening, and yeah. you then get a kind of a French chypre, oh. patchouli, uh, um, oak yeah. moss, dry down. Almost as if like you've had your one chapter, and then your, your second chapter, yes. then you have your coda at the Absolutely. end. Just, just to take you like ABA, kind of take you back. Just to, to remind you the origins of the magic and where it all started. Of the openings, and we were talking about this, this earlier, and, and the one thing is, it's almost... Um, it's really good pointless doing it doing a video like this because it's it's quite difficult um, um fragrance to, to to pin down but what is really um pleasurable about it i think is the the, the fact that it, it leads you in so many places and it kind of really takes you on a um a journey and there's a lot mm. to uh you, you can either uh, just have it in a, take it on face value as a kind of bright incense -y opening and then a kind of resinous dry down. But it, it, if you wear it, um, th th there is a lot to find if you look for it. Um, but uh, it's not, I don't think it's a particularly challenging fragrance. No, it's, it's challenging in the best sense of making you think and making you appreciate and making you, making you work to find things. Yeah. It's not challenging in the sense of I could never wear this. But it's not. I mean, because other people will. If, if, run we, away. if we talk about other um, some uh, challenging re uh, releases from zoologist, um, like uh, like um, Hyrax or um, T Rex. T -Rex. I mean, I, I, I own T Rex and I, and I really love it. But there, oh, there so are 
I would have to think, oh, is this a good occasion on which what, to wear T Rex? Are going to be in a, you know, yeah. a small room? Um, with it people. has to be. It has to be really well considered, doesn't it? Yeah. Whereas this, I, 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 I don't those. think that that, that, that that is the case. With no, it's just a beautiful, stuff, beautiful, seductive fragrance you could wear any time. I think um, I'd wear that on a hot summer's day. And I, yeah, I, no, I have, I have yeah. in the past few weeks worn it on, on a hot day. Um, mm. And I really think uh, uh, above all that this is a kind of a perfume lover's perfume. Yes. This is one, you know, if, you, if you've watched our channel, we, we have a real interest in vintage fragrances and um, kind of niche artisanal kind yeah. of adventurous fragrances. And for, 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 for me, I think this has got a bit of both of those. Yeah. It, under, it understands that actually there are people out there that want... They want something that actually entices their nose and makes you work for it a little bit. You know, not in a not in a lazy way that this is impossible mm. to decipher, but just something that you want to wear repeatedly and go back to and and think about and find mm. things and sit on a chair on your own for hours. But um that you know, that's that's what I love about this. Absolutely. Um and uh you get, you know, you we get out what you put in. We we said at the beginning that um you know, it may seem like like Victor One was taking a risk with going with a self-taught perfumer by Sultan Pasha, but actually smelling this, it feels. Um, it, I think it smells very, very polished, and it and it and it feels like there is a level finesse, level yeah. of finesse, which could have come from an IFF totally uh, perfumer or. It's got the craft, but it's also got the vision. I it, think that's something that's often lacking. In some of the the slightly safer mass appealing things, the, the craft is there without a doubt. Yeah, you can smell the these. Skill. Yeah, that's yeah. really well put together. Yeah. Does it excite me in any way? Mm. This actually does both. Yeah, this. I mean, there is. Um, there's definitely mm. a huge so amount good. of personality uh, in this fragrance. Yeah, uh, and I, I don't think you could. Um, uh, 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 the very it smells expensive as well. I have to say, <laughs> yeah. it does smell expensive. <laughs> it, it has it, gone up it in price. Smells, it smells. Yeah. It smells expensive. It smells. It's so unique. Uh, 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 the, the notes are, and the ingredients are clearly. But it's, it's it smells. You know, it smells not, original. Not on first that. spray, you think, oh yeah, it smells a bit like you know Chanel Number no. Five, that that kind of aldehyde kind of, um, and then you, you're taking a completely uh, different, um, yeah, direction. I'm certainly pleased that I spent my money on it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, it'd be interested to, to hear what mm. other people think about, about it. it um, yeah, I mean, is it is it actually not safe at all? Is it, do mm. people think it's, 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 it's challenging? To Some work? people might find that really challenging. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it all depends on your frame of reference, yeah. doesn't it? And, and what, you've, what you've... As I say, I mean, I just, I just feel like, f for me, for someone of, of, of my taste, of the kind of loss of vintage with a bit of weird, it, it's just kind of tick those boxes yeah. with some kind of French um, uh, um, finesse. So I, I imagine it, it might not necessarily be everyone's cup of tea, but I think it's, you know, it's a real fraghead's frag. Yeah. Uh, also, it might not be everyone's mm. cup of tea, but also it's it's not necessarily one person's shot of whiskey. You know? There, there, <laughs> but there's often that divide, isn't it? Like, I'd yeah, rather be yeah. every, one person's shot of whiskey and no one's cup of tea. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. I think this straddles a nice middle ground. Yeah, yeah. I think this is several people's shot of whiskey. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. I, I would be really. I'm gonna buy that tomorrow. To hear um, other people's thoughts mm. because I can imagine um, they they may differ, and I would really like to. Uh, to we to, hope to, they to, would. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the thing with anything with personality. People have different opinions. So yeah. if you've tried it, let us know. But until next time, bye. Happy sniffing. <laughs>